So if it is your first time using Google Classroom, I'm going to walk you through going ahead and setting up your account. So you're going to be logging in with a school Google account. It only works on school Google accounts. And you're going to go to classroom.google.com. And when you're logged into your account, your account ID will show up here. And when you come in, down here on the right, you're going to see Get Started Using Classroom IMA. It is very, very important for teachers to select teacher. If they accidentally select student, you will need your administrator to come in and change them into the teacher group on their side to make it work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select teacher. And it's going to take me in for the very first time. The first time you see this old school chalkboard background. And so it says create your first class. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'm going to do create class. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm creating a fellow teacher's class right now. If you want to add a section, you can, and you're going to hit create. And it's going to go ahead and set up your first class. To add more, you would still just come back to the plus sign from the home screen. And it will initially take you on a tour. I'm going to go ahead for the moment and take us back to home. This landing page lets you see your different classes, each in a separate tile. Like I was saying, from the plus, you can create a class or you could join a class. For your students, they would do classroom.google.com. They would choose student where you chose teacher. They would come up to the plus and do join a class. And a little later, I'll show you where the code is for them to get into your class. So if I want to look at this class, the little dots give me the option to rename or archive at the end of the year. Gives you an overview of how many students, any upcoming assignments. And this folder will actually take you to your Google Drive because the minute you open up that classroom account and start off a class, what it actually does is in your drive, it builds you a folder called classroom. And within that folder for each class, it builds a folder. You don't have to go create all those things like we used to do before Google Classroom. So I'm going to take this and I want you to see that you can look at just assignments that need to be reviewed and things you've already done here very quickly. You can look at your class. You also have some settings here at the bottom where you can change profile pictures, account settings. You can decide whether you want to get email, send email notifications. So we're going to come on back to her class. So in her class, you can choose a theme. They have some that are pre-built in. They have a gallery and then they have some patterns. And you can upload a photo if you prefer. A lot of teachers who have multiple classes will go ahead and put a different theme in or a different picture for each class to make it a little easier. So I'll give you a quick tour of Google Classroom. You have three main sections on the teacher side. You have your stream, think Facebook and other places like that. That's where all of the posts and things happen. In your stream, you can either make an announcement or you can put an assignment. If I click announcement, you can see I can share some information. I can attach things. I can put things in from Google Drive. I can put a video link or another type of link. With assignment, it says it looks like I'm creating assignment. I'm going to go ahead and close the tour. I would put in a title. I can put in a description. For your description, you can put just a few lines or you can put a paragraph or two. You have plenty of room to tell the kids exactly what you want them to do. You can set a due date and a time. If you click on the paper clip, it's going to give you the options to upload, choose something from your Google Drive, or choose something that's in your stored files. So that's a quick way if you store it when you build it, you can get to it really fast from your Google Drive. If you choose the Google Drive folder, you're actually going to see the same window. The only difference is it brings you straight to Drive. So both ways get you there. You have your videos, especially obviously YouTube. Um, you have URLs there. And you could also put in a link to a website. So if I want the kids to refer to a website as part of their assignment, I can actually put that link there. So no more of the trying to type it in or put it in a place where they can all get to it easily. And I would just click add for that. So one of the things that's really important for us as teachers is the ability to hand things out. Now this is a brand new teacher. I'm going to go ahead into her classroom file and I'm actually going to make a doc real quick. So yes, I'm putting it in that shared folder for now. And for now, we're just going to call this, once it pops up, we'll call it a demo doc. Just so that I can show you one of the great features that teachers love once they start using it. And it really doesn't matter what it says in this demo doc. So I'm going to come back over to my classroom tab, and I'm going to come to here. 
And in my drive, I put it in my classroom folder because you can add things to those folders. And I'm going to grab this demo doc and I'm going to say add. Now, what's really important, and it reviews it with you there, you have three options. You can say that students can view a file, meaning all of them just simply see it. You can say that students can edit a file. If you say that, you are giving children permission to all work on the same file. Just like when we work on a Google Doc all together live, same idea. Now, it also means as long as this child is working on that document, they have access anywhere they can log in. Or you have make a copy for each student. The great thing about make a copy for each student is you can create something that you want the kids to fill in, work on. I do lab templates where the kids have to go in and create their um, answers, their observations, their hypothesis. And you can actually go in, create the form you want them to do, make a copy for each student, and then each child does their own and is able to turn it in. It just automatically gives them a copy. And so you're going to choose whichever one it is you want. So I'm going to say make a copy for each student. And you also are going to be able to do a sign. Okay. Um, right now, there's no little button here. But should she have more than one class, there will be a little arrow where you can click a drop down. And you can click all the different classes that you want to add. The one caution, and I'm telling you this from the experience of mistakes, if you would choose like two classes and you meant to do three and you assign this with something being made as a copy for each student, you're going to have to go back and redo that assignment because in the past, unless they do a new update soon, what happened was it would not go out and reassign that document to that third class. So I always tell teachers to be very, very careful of that. So those are your options. Now it's probably not going to let me assign anything right now because there are no children in this class. This little drop down arrow next to assign, you also will have the option next to assign to do save as draft, which means you could set it all up, save it as a draft, and then post it later when you want to. So those are your options for assigning things to students. You can decide whether or not deleted items show up in the stream. And you also have down here class code. And this is where the kids would get this little code from you, go to that plus sign in Google Classroom in the top right, and do join a class and put in that code. They also added the ability for a teacher to reset it. Maybe one of the kids who's in a different section than another was giving kids in another section that code number, and you need to reset it so that there's not a problem. You also have the ability to disable it. Say you get all of your 20, 30 kids, however many you have, into your class, you can now disable that code so nobody new is adding in, and then you could come back and re-enable it. As you add on, this stream will be just added to. The important thing to realize is you may want to consider how do you name your assignments. Some teachers number them so that they're easy to get back to. Some teachers just know that the date will sort itself out and they're good with that. So you'll want to put a little thought into that as you get started. Students. So there are a couple of things here that are important. Number one, you could invite kids. For my school, this doesn't work because the teachers are not allowed to use our Gmail accounts. We have to be run through a district-wide thing. So this doesn't work for our school, but if you had your students all on the same email system and your district allows it, you could invite them. For us, we have to go the code route. You also have the ability to decide what can kids do. Can they post and comment? Can they only comment? Only the teacher can post or comment. A little bit of my soapbox here, if you'll pardon me. Please think about this one. I encourage you to try, if you can, to give the kids some ability it's very easy for us to say, let's lock these children down, but it's also a good chance here for us to talk about digital citizenship, using things at the appropriate time, which is what I did with my class. Out of all my students last year, only two decided to put some things, they weren't inappropriate, they just weren't relevant. So what I did was put a note to the child that this is not relevant, made sure they needed it, saw it, we had a conversation later, and I said, if this happens again, I'm going to have to remove your ability. And that ended the problem. So you're going to want to think about your kids and your situation and maybe how you could structure this. Your class code is also listed here. Now, once you get a student, this little piece in the middle will disappear and you will actually see the students' names. You will have the ability to email them, to mute them. All of those will come under this actions menu, which is blank right now. The about section is a good one. You can add a title, a class description. You could tell where you meet shows you your Google Drive folder. 
They also added recently for us the ability to invite another teacher. So you can add a teacher to your Google Classroom. The other great thing they've added over the summer is the ability to work with other schools who have a Google domain for their school. You will need your Google domain administrator to do what is called whitelisting, meaning allowing their school's domain to interact with yours, and it'll be a vice versa thing. Both sides have to let that other domain in. But that opens up amazing possibilities. I have some teachers who are looking at doing peer editing with students in the same grade a couple hours away. I have a teacher in another state who's looking to collaborate with one of my fifth grade teachers. And so they're going to look at how they can do some projects and work together. And Google Classroom could be a great place to do that with this new domain sharing ability. The other thing I want to point out is if there are basic materials you post out to your class, could be your class letter, your rules, your syllabus, depending on your grade level, this is a great place to post it so that they can get to it. And so you can also add links and things here that you just want the kids to have access to all the time. And so that's a very quick overview and introduction to getting started with Google Classroom. 